Welcome back. While the debate over the metric pass rate and the quality of the pass mark continues, Paul Esterhazen, CEO of School Days, is the latest to weigh in on the matter. He says given that the pass mark in some subjects is as low as 30 percent, his, this figure is nothing to celebrate. He says most school leavers will struggle to find employment, even having passed matric. He joins us now for more on this. Paul, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for coming on to the South African Morning. You share this sentiment with the likes of Build One South Africa's, uh, you know, Musima Imani and a whole lot of other people who, for the last, I think since 2008 or 9, when I was, you know, finishing off high school, it was felt that it's actually 33.3% that is the pass mark, you know, in, under FET, and that they, was, they would say that our kids are getting out of uh, secondary school uh, probably a lot dumber than they got in. I mean, just your thoughts on, on, on the pass mark not improving, or at least going, we could start with 40%? Well, well, good morning, Morena, and yes, good morning, Faith, and uh, we wake to another rising sun and another new day, and uh, the concerns linger uh, when we know that we're already into the, the new school year, we've got a new group of matriculants who are coming through in number, and we reflect back on, on results. And yeah, the truth of the matter is that if we're going to deem that your average that you would need in your exams is to crack a 37.5% average, which means less than, less than four out of every 10 questions you are asked, you're not competent to pass after having spent 12 years at school. Mm. So we, 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 we ponder these things so regularly and we look at how do you fix it, how do you change it? The headline for me should actually read that one in five matriculants who wrote the exams this last year failed. Mm. And that's, that's almost a condemnation on saying we haven't delivered the curriculum that those learners who wrote all the way through and made it to matric. And the big fall off rate is in actual fact that a number of matriculants never got to matric. Those who aspired and signed up in grade one 12 years ago, wow. um, close on half a million learners never got to matric. And, and that's where this big clamor around uh, the, the, the actual pass rate of those who should have been writing matric. Um, is down at 30% of those children who actually should have got to the metric and write, written the results. But, you know, your questions are going to be real. It's going, you're going to be uh, trying to say, well, hold on, the independent examination board exams that were written by the independent schools show some r remarkable results and consistently achieve a 98% pass rate. So then what are we doing in our public schools that we can't deliver metrics to get, like you're saying, get me 40%? Get me, get me the 50% and higher. Oh. Um, it's got to be that the curriculum is, uh, is in, inadequately taught um, and learners get into a situation where when you've missed out in a year, your competence to go to the next grade is compromised because if you haven't got it in the grade that you're in, um, you're unable to go up to the next grade and then you're just going to keep on floundering and ultimately, you go, we're going to have the challenge of where you drop and you say, I can't write the core maths. It's too difficult. What can I do? And so we prefer a, an easier alternative where you do competent maths, as it were, where you go and um, you do maths literacy, which is nothing more than be having the basic enablement to you know, maybe calculate what a 10% tip is on a, on, a, on a bill in a restaurant. Mm. You know, Paul, as you're speaking about the realities of these metric results, now there will be pockets of analysis. There will be, especially when it comes to the Department of Basic Education, who have defended their stance of this 80% pass rate. And we can understand why they would defend it, because at the head of it is somebody who is the political head um, of the Department of Basic Education, and of course that would be the minister, right? And one would say that the political head, uh, there is absolute every intention on staying mm. within that course, right? And not having her career jeopardized as a minister by giving strict results that are not untoward. So society or, or pockets of society or interest groups will defend the 80 percent, irrespective of how many people started in grade 11 versus how many people start, uh, well, not starting grade, grade, starting grade one in 2011 and actually finished off matric in 2022. We don't talk enough about that, that over 50% of them actually have, have fallen by the wayside and what that impact looks like for the greater unemployment rate. Then we're going to have a different pockets of society saying, 
we hear you, Paul, but we're not saying learners must get 30% to pass or 33% to pass. We're saying that the benchmark is 33%. The learners can aspire to get higher. They can get 70% or 80%. You've heard this analysis time and time again. What do you say to them? Because I tell you now, as we have seen, that 80% pass rate is being defended tooth and nail. <laughs> so, Faith, I think we should put us the, um, the elements of throwing stones. And, but you touched on it right at the outset. You said it's about leadership. And leadership in our education environment should be something that is so openly embraced because it should flow down to the level of leadership that we have in our schools where a principal will motivate teachers to ensure that we have heads of grade that we have we need to have principals deputy principals we can't just have one leader in a school we need yeah. we need a management system in a school that leads and that leadership needs to filter into teachers we need heads of grades so that we can ensure in every single grade whomever is leading at that school, they've got the ability to say, we will make sure we get the curriculum taught. Mm -hmm. We will make sure that every learner that comes into our school and don't separate it from, you know, well, you're smarter because you go to an independent school or you've got more money because you go to in, an independent school. Wherever you are at school, you're going to have the same thing. You're going to be sat at a desk, hopefully, and you're going to be given some teaching methodologies. So if the principal in a school gets it right with deputies, gets it right to ensure that in the classroom, however many learners we have, and I know it's difficult with overcrowded classrooms, but if we can get the curriculum taught and we can say, here, yeah, you're in grade, and I, I'm, I say hats off to the department for saying, let's get the kids into, into school in a grade R, get them into a grade double R, get them into grade triple R, so that we get these kids school ready for a curriculum that will be taught. And if we can do that, then from the bottom up, every new learner that's coming in, because, you know, I have this, uh, we're running out of time again. We've got another matric group who we're trying to say, well, don't write matric if you can't pass it. And you're saying, well, I don't think I can pass it because I didn't pass my grade 10 well enough. I didn't grasp, pass my grade 11 well enough. I'm going, to, I'm going to drown in matric. I'll never get by. And then you've got teachers in matric time to say, I don't know how we're going to get these kids through. So stand up. One in five learners who wrote matric failed. That's an indictment on what we're doing. So change this whole thing and let's get our leaders going down. Business has come to the party. They've often said, how do we get involved? And, and what is the solution? The solution says we need to support our schools. We can't have them as standalones. We need to get the society's got to do this. And I get it that it's difficult because so many people who have their children at school are commuting to work, getting home late from that commute, uh, not earning massive salaries. I mean, if you look at what's really happened in this country since 2005, we're saying 6% of our GDP is afforded back and paid into education. Quite actually, in actual fact, it's not enough because we've had population growth mm. and our GDP growth is back to where it was in 2005. Mm. So that is also a chilling number. And the way we readdress this is, yes, you do need money. You need money invested. You need community, business. We as parents and grandparents and communities need to say, how do we support a school? How do we get behind leaders? Wonderful movements like Partners for Possibility. Louise van Rijn has for, for nearly two decades now been, been saying we need to get our teachers um, following good principles. How do we get our principles upskilled? How do we upskill teachers? How do we drill this down? And how do we collectively do this? And that, that you know, like, yes, the clock ticks faster than we know it. And we're already pushing the end of January. We need to... We need to be addressing this and the way we get behind it is not by just criticizing it and it does become political when we say oh it's a protected environment and they're going to say we did incredibly well you know 80 percent got more than 30 percent for their final exams more than 37 and a half is the criteria and we need to get them into universities so you know there, there was one question posed that i know you said is the independent examination board exam easier or more difficult why do they get 98 percent and then we don't get it on the other side of the table where we're in our public schools. And in actual fact, what happens is the curriculum that's modeled in the independent schools has a methodology that is, that is more, uh, it's framed in a more challenging way so that the learners who write that exam will have a greater competency when they get to university. So, so th that's the aspirational element of saying, 
teach me the curriculum, teach it to me well. Don't just push me to the next grade because I'm older and you can't have capacity in my grade where I'm failing. We need to support those who are failing. We need, there's so much to be done. And, you know, for the school days of a child's life, we as, as a country need to be saying, here's a child born into our country. We want them to stay here and we want them to, you know, get through primary school and then get into the high school years and come out there with a matric pass, which yeah. says you're going to be a competent, intelligent, a role-playing citizen for our country. It's a long game, but it's doable. And we've, yeah. we've got to get behind it. You know, that's why we, we've modeled school days for the school days of children's lives. And, and we want to help and support. Yeah. Just, just before we let you go. It's great um, that you do so. Yeah. Just before we let you go, Paul, and, and as briefly as you possibly can, you've touched on a point that I wanted to uh, pose to you about the curriculum. Do we then change the curriculum into a standard of perhaps IEB and if, maybe even better? But in doing so, are we going to have the teachers that can teach this curriculum? Because that's another issue that we're having in this country. Never mind the issues of paying teachers well enough to even want to be doing this job because there is that despondency among teachers in South Africa, especially in public schools. So do we then upskill the teachers to be able to teach this curriculum that we would then be upgrading for public schools to a point where they, we can at least have close as close as to IEB as we possibly can is that maybe where we were falling short as 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 government is that we're not upskilling teachers and then maybe even paying them what they deserve yeah we it's great that you do that Moreno and we look at the is there a career path for a, a person in matric who's matriculated and got a university entrance and wants to be a teacher is there a career path to say I'm going into education or is education becoming the easy default because I can get a job, I can easily qualify, the standard and criteria is not as difficult, and then I'll go and teach, and I won't have a career path. So it straight back to the leadership. We need to identify how many teachers. It's great that we're going to be doing you know, pre-primary school, and we're going to be looking at the early childhood development, yeah. but do we have competent teachers to be able to fulfill on all of that, or are we just creating another quagmire into which we can't actually lift our feet out of? So we do need to address this. We do need to ensure that one of the greatest aspirational vocations that a child could want to do is to say, I want to teach because I understand the realities of what it is. And there's a calling. When you call to teach and you have an aptitude for it, we need to also model that. So I go straight up to the top again and I say, leaders, please lead. Yeah. Don't just say that everything's okay. We're not going to just be okay. We can see by the numbers, by the reality, we're not getting the results we need. And then we have this clear um, divide that we will continually have to struggle with. And it's, it's sad for our country because oh. those who qualify with excellence are saying there's a career path on a jet plane to another country. And we're saying, how do we hold you back and how do we get that? So schools have got to be, they've got to be revisited. Leadership, management, principals have got to be paid more to lead, to stay in the game. And all the way down the chain, you've got to say, well, if I start, it's a four-year path, then I qualify, then I'm in schools and I'm teaching, and can you recognize me, reward me, oh. and give me that joy of being a teacher? It's yeah. a wonderful world, and we've got to make it happen. So, Yeah. You, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it certainly does, Paul, speak yeah. about um, a, a world or just a department and a teaching path yeah. that we would all aspire to have. You know, and again, it goes in with how what has been shared, how it actually translates at an implementation level. Paul, we have to leave it here for today, but much appreciated for your insights there. Paul Easterhazen is actually the CEO um, of School Days, so just providing us some insights on this teaching. Because the, the truth of the matter is, Morena, you know it will be defended. 80%, 80.1%, it will be defended. It will be said, no, this is how much that is a reflection of, without obviously counting how many kids actually got to sit in with an uh, intermetric after they started in mm. grade one, right? And, and how many fell by the wayside? How many are sitting at home lost, yeah. right? And how many of them actually add and contribute to the unemployment rate that we're actually, um, you know, that we're struggling with, especially when it comes to youth unemployment. So we are so obsessed with telling a good story yeah. that I don't know if it's to our detriment if we are consistently wanting to tell that good story. Let me give you the reality just very quickly because I know we, 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 did, we spoke quite a lot with Paul. When I matriculated in 2009 and I collected my results in 2010, January, our pass mark, or at least our pass, you know, pass rate, yeah. the pass rate that year 
69%. My baby sister matriculated last year, collected her results this month, pass rate 80%. So you're going to defend oh, 100%. a 11% yeah, yeah. increase in just the last, what, 18 years mm -hmm. or 12, 12 years? You're going to defend it. We, I came out, my class, my grade, to, uh, 2009, 69 percent and now the minister and the department have look at us look look at what we've done in the last 12 years why wouldn't you think that it's a good story to tell or something yeah. to celebrate but still 33.3 percent pass mark yeah, it certainly is a conversation when it comes to education. More than anything else, hey, it's your child's education that matters. But let's move on to...